so in the Daniel cell, you have a reaction waiting to happen. In the zinc strip, the atoms have a relatively weak hold on their outer electrons. In the other beaker, copper ions are ready to grab electrons. The moment the wire connects both metals, it all becomes one system a continuous sea of electrons effectively connecting the copper ions to the zinc atoms. And here's what happens. As a copper ion collides with atoms at this end, it has an opportunity to grab two electrons from the copper strip to become a neutral atom. This leaves the metal strip two electrons short and positively charged. This drags electrons from the wire which in turn drags them from a zinc atom in the lattice. When the zinc atom loses two electrons, it becomes a zinc ion. Its positive charge repels it out from the metal lattice into the surrounding solution. Once the early chemists realised that different metals would react with each other, they started playing around with all sorts of combinations. They'd put a metal in a solution containing a supply of its ions to make a half cell. Then, they'd do the same with a different metal to make a second half cell. When they used copper and silver, the copper strip dissolved and silver was deposited on the silver electrode. In a copper lead setup, the lead strip was eaten away, with copper deposited on the copper electrode. We've already seen what happens in a zinc copper cell. The zinc strip is eaten away, while copper is deposited on the other electrode. What does all this mean? In the first cell, copper and silver, we see that silver ions are the stronger oxidant. They took electrons from copper. So, if we rank the two half reactions in order of oxidant strength, silver ions rank above copper ions. <laughs>